स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Let's do some problems. Okay, on groups and group actions and so on. So here's problem one. So to state this problem, let me first recall something about uh, symmetric groups and uh, cycle decomposition and so on. So recall if I take the group G to be the symmetric group SN. So n is let's say at least two symmetric group, and if I take a typical element of S n, I have a cycle decomposition, right? So sigma has a cycle decomposition. Recall, this means that you can write it as a product of disjoint cycles. So let's maybe do it by example. Suppose n is nine, so I'm looking at s nine, and if sigma say is the element, uh, it's a product of one, two, uh, three, five, six, nine, four, seven, eight. Okay, so this is a permutation of the numbers one through nine, and the cycle decomposition just says that, for example, that. Four, seven, and eight form a three cycle. In other words, sigma maps four to seven. So this is what sigma does. It maps seven to eight, and it maps eight back to four. Okay. So the element one is mapped back to itself, and so on. Okay. So there are some two cycles as well. Three goes to five. Five goes to three. So recall this is what decomposing a, a permutation into cycles uh, means. Now uh, here's what I want to um, look at. I want to sort of study the lengths of the cycles, or maybe for a start, let's look at how many one cycles does uh, do the various elements of S and have. Okay, so what do I mean by a one cycle? So here, for example, this particular example of sigma, this particular sigma has two one cycles. Okay, so it actually has two one cycles. Okay, by one cycle I mean the length of the cycle is one. In other words, this one is really a fixed point of sigma. Sigma maps one back to itself. Okay, it actually has two two cycles as well. So this has two two cycles. Okay, which are three five and six nine. And it has one three cycle, which is four going to seven going to eight. Okay, so this is the three cycle. There are two. One cycles and there are two two cycles. Okay, uh, so in particular, what's the total number of cycles? If you wish, so total number of cycles, total number of cycles is five in this case. Okay, so two plus two plus one. Okay, so here's the first problem. So uh, this was all by way of preliminaries. So now let me state the problem. So let's uh, consider the following sum. So prove that if you take the sum over all elements of S n, I take the number of one cycles. In sigma, this sum will always give me the answer n factorial. Okay. So the sum of the number of one cycles of sigma. Uh, sum over all elements sigma ranging over S n gives me the order of the group S n, which is n factorial. Okay, so let's check this out in some easy, simple cases. So, example, suppose I just look at the symmetric group S three, and let me just write out all the elements sigma. So here's sigma. So this is the identity element one going to two going to three. I'm sorry, one, two, and three each going to itself. Here are 
the transpositions which only permute two of the elements and leave the third one fixed and there are these two three cycles. Okay, so, there are six elements of sigma now let us tabulate the number of one cycles. Okay, how many one cycles do we have in each? So, here there are three one cycles. Okay, this guy the next one has only one one cycle which is just this singleton 3. Yes, likewise these two also have only one one cycle. These two permutations the last two guys do not have any one cycles because in fact it, it just has a single 3 cycle. Okay, so, let us add all these up. So, that is 3 plus 3 which is 6 which is exactly 3 factorial. Okay, so, this is an, uh, an instance of, of this problem this example if you take n equals 3 you do actually get 3 factorial. Okay, so, let us see how does one prove uh, statements like this often many of these problems can be rephrased appropriately as a problem about group actions. Okay. So, at this point I would encourage you to sort of you know spend some time trying to work out the solution on your own, uh, but let me also tell you how to do this. So, if you do not succeed here is the solution which you can look at maybe for hints or for the entire solution. So, here is the here is the idea. So, let us take this group S n and let us look at a, a, a following natural set on which it acts. Okay. So, this is the set of all numbers from 1 to n. Okay, so, recall this group G acts on this set x in the following natural way. If I take an element sigma in S n, if I take an element sigma in S n, how does it act on uh, uh, element k from this set x? Well, k since it is some element from 1 to n and sigma being a permutation of the numbers 1 to n, sigma will act on k and give me some other number between 1 and n. Right. So, here is the definition you just define. So, the definition I define sigma acting on k to just be sigma of k. Okay. So, this is the definition. Okay. And of course, that is also an element of x okay. and it is easy to check this is an action. So, this is an action sometimes called the defining action of this group S n. Some sense the group is it occurs naturally as uh, you know the set of all possible uh, you know permutations of the set. Okay. Now, uh, now let us do the following let us look at this orbit counting statement. Okay. So, we have the uh, theorem which tells us how to determine the number of orbits um, for, a, for an action of a group. So, let us study the orbits first. So, let us first ask ourselves what do the orbits of this action look like. Okay. Uh, if you just spend a couple of minutes, you will realize that in fact, there is only one single orbit here. Okay. So, recall this is the set x. So, what does the orbit mean? Okay. How do I construct orbits? For example, I take one single element of x say the element 1 and the orbit of this element 1 will just mean I have to act every possible group element on 1 and collect together all the answers that I get. Okay, so, I on 1 I act by various elements. So, I act by some group element sigma by some other group element tau and so on. So, I, I keep acting on 1 by every possible group element and I will get some elements of my set. The collection of all these elements is what is called the orbit of my, my point 1. Okay, so, let us write that down the orbit of the element 1 by definition is just sigma acting on 1 for all sigma ranging over S n. Okay, but notice you can always find a permutation which takes the number 1 to any other number between 1 and n. Okay. So, by suitably constructing sigmas I can get every element k here. So, this will give me every number k between 1 and n. Okay. In other words this is just the, the whole set x itself. Okay. And what is the easiest uh, sigma which maps 1 to k? So, if I want uh, an element sigma which takes 1 and maps it to k, well I can take just the transposition 1 k. So, I can take for example, the element 1 k okay, and leaving all the others fixed. So, this is just the transposition which maps 1 to k and, and leaves all the other numbers fixed. This permutation of course, takes the number 1 and maps it to the number k. Okay, so, this is an example of one such element. So, it is clear that the orbit of 1 is in fact the entire set x here. Okay. 
So, in particular it means that the number of orbits, so the number of orbits for this particular action is just 1. Okay. So, uh, such an action is sometimes called a transitive action in which there is only one orbit. In other words, every element of the set uh, can be mapped to every other element of the set by some uh, action of some group element. Okay, so, we have determined the number of orbits to be 1. So, now let us apply our orbit counting theorem. So, what does the orbit counting theorem say? Orbit It says that the number of orbits is nothing but 1 by cardinality of the group G. Uh, overall sigma ranging over the group G of the fixed point set of sigma. Okay. So, this is the number of orbits uh, for the group action G on X. Okay. It was given by this. So, recall this is also called Burnside's lemma and so on, where X sigma is the fixed point set, meaning it is all those elements of X which are mapped to themselves. So, sigma of k is k. Okay, this is all elements of the set which are mapped to themselves by sigma, the fixed element of the group. Okay, now, this set, the fixed point set, what does it mean? So, if I, if I pick some element sigma in my group G, my group G is S n here, what does the fixed point set mean? Well, observe that, you know, what are the fixed points of a permutation? Well, those are exactly the one cycles. So, let us go back up, uh, look at this, this picture of sigma that we had. So, observe that the if, if you want a point k which maps to itself under sigma, right? that is what sig, a fixed point means, sigma k equals k, then these are the only two options. So, these are the only two fixed points. The numbers 1 and 2 are the only fixed points for this particular sigma. So, observe in this example x sigma, the fixed points are just the numbers 1 and 2. None of the other numbers can be fixed points. For example, when you see the cycle decomposition, it becomes clear 4 cannot be a fixed point because sigma maps 4 to the next element in the cycle okay? and that element is not itself because the cycle has length at least 2. Same thing here, 3 cannot be a fixed point because sigma takes 3 to whatever the next element of the cycle is okay? and so on. So, the only way you can get fixed points if is if that element occurs as part of a one cycle. Okay. So, what does that mean? We have proved the following that in fact, the number of fixed points therefore, is the same as the number of one cycles. Okay, is the number of one cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma. And now, we are more or less done because all we have to do is just look at this, this statement here, okay, put everything together. So, observe, if we take this statement, let me call this equation star. So, now, I, I just look at the following thing. The left hand side was the number of orbits which we know is 1, the right hand side is according to what we just said, it is 1 by the cardinality sum over all group elements of uh, the fixed point set, which is just the same as the number of 1 cycles. Okay, and now, we are done because these two things are equal and that is exactly what we had to prove. Okay, so, proved, proved whatever we needed to prove, which is the statement up here that the number of one cycles in sigma summed over all group elements gives me n factorial. Okay, so, that is an application of uh, uh, group actions. So, let us do one more along the same lines. So, here is problem 2. Now, this, this time it is not uh, the number of one cycles that we will look at but rather we will just look at the total number of cycles. Okay, so, now I am going to just say, let me look at the total number of uh, cycles. Okay. 
total number of cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma. Okay, so, what does that mean? Let us go up again. Here, for instance, the total number of cycles was 5. Okay, so, I, I do not care what the individual lengths of the cycles are, I just want to know how many total number you know of cycles there are. Okay, so, I take the total number of cycles, but I do something slightly different here. I look at 2 raised to the total number of cycles. Okay, 2 to the power of total number of cycles summed over all elements of the group S n. Now, I claim it gives me n plus 1 factorial, not n factorial anymore, but rather n plus 1 factorial. Okay, again, an interesting sort of statement. Um, again, please try this on your own, but here is the solution nevertheless. So, as before, you know, in all these things, let one should always try this out on some simple examples. So, let us do the same uh, example as before, which is uh, the case of S3 and let us write out all the, the elements sigma as before. I have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 into 3. One, three, two. There are six elements. Now, in each case, let me say how many total number of cycles. So, this is the total number of cycles. So, here there are three of them. Uh, here I have two cycles, this one and this one. Here again, two cycles, two cycles. These two have one cycle each. Okay, but remember, I have to do two raised to the total number of cycles, right? So, two to the number of cycles. Okay, so, that is for the first guy it is 2 cubed, second guy it is 2 square, 2 square, 2 power 1, 2 power 1. Okay, so, let us add all these numbers up, they are all various powers of 2. So, I have 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12 plus 2 plus 2 is 4. So, that gives me uh, 24. Okay, and 24 is actually 4 factorial now, it is not 3 factorial anymore, it is n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so that is the um, that is the next interesting fact about the number of cycles which occur in the various cycle decompositions of elements of, of the symmetric group. Okay, let us prove this again a proof by group actions. So, here is the solution. Okay, so, as before let us look at the group G equals S n and it had this defining action, it acted on the set x which was 1 to n. But uh, we have encountered this uh, following construct, when a group acts on a set, it also acts on all subsets of that set. Okay? So, now, uh, because I have this action of g on x, it implies I can also consider another action of the group g on the power set of x. Okay, so, what is this? The power set of x just means the set of all y subset of x. Okay, maybe we should say set of all y where y ranges over the subsets of x. Okay, so, the power set of x is well I also include the empty set here. So, we have we have seen this before I have a natural action. What is the action? If I take an element sigma from my group G, if I take a subset y of x, the action of sigma on y is just defined to be the element wise action. So, I take sigma and I act on k for every k coming from the subset y. Okay, now, when I do this, what I generate is again some new subset of x, right? potentially a different subset of x. Okay, now, uh, we had also seen a finer, uh, finer thing here that this subset sigma y has the same cardinality as y. So, in fact, you can also say that the um, there is an action of the group G on subsets of x of a certain fixed cardinality also if you want. Okay. In this case, we will not need that, that finer distinction, we will just look at the action of G on the entire power set. Okay. But let us make this observation nevertheless, it is an important observation which we will need that the cardinality of sigma acting on y is the same as the cardinality of y. 
okay because when sigma acts on k for every every k and y it it gives me distinct elements okay so this is an important property okay now again let's do the same analysis as before let's understand what the orbits look like for this action and how many orbits there are so what are the orbits well the first thing to observe is that because the cardinality of sigma y and the cardinality of y are the same we certainly can't um, you know we, we we cannot change the number of elements in a subset by acting by some group element okay so this particular group action preserves the cardinalities of subsets so let's define uh, those subsets pd of x so what is pd of x in this case this is just uh, all y such that y is a subset of x and y has cardinality d okay so what is d here d can be 0 and go all the way up to the cardinality of x the cardinality of x is n in this case okay so in, in order to understand the orbits i first uh, construct these uh, these elements pd of x okay so these are subsets of a fixed cardinality now i claim that the set pd of x is a single g orbit okay, so here's the first observation we make that pd of x this subset of p of x forms a single g orbit okay so let's prove this so what does this uh, forms a single g orbit mean i have to show that given any two subsets of uh, say cardinality d i can map one to the other by means of some group element okay or uh, let me sort of do a simpler thing so let me take the the subset 1 2 3 till d okay let me call this subset a so consider the subset 1 2 3 till d okay so this is a particular element particular subset in pd of x a sort of a special guy the first d consecutive numbers now let me take any other subset of of cardinality d so let me write out the elements uh, let's call y as so what are the elements of y they are y1 y2 yd okay, this is another subset in p of x okay, some arbitrarily written out elements i just uh, label them as y1 y2 yd in any any way i care and now let me claim that i can construct so now observe the following that i can construct an element in my group Sn, there exists sigma in Sn such that when sigma acts on A, I will get the subset Y. Okay, and how do I construct this this sigma? Well, what is it that I need to do? How do I construct sigma? So I sort of have some. So here's how I construct sigma um, b plus one to n. Remember, sigma is some permutation of the numbers one through n, right? So how do I want it? To to be 1 2 3 till n so i need to construct sigma now so that's what i'm going to so this this map now is going to be sigma so i already know something that i want sigma to satisfy okay when sigma acts on these d elements i'm supposed to produce these d elements right so there are many different ways of doing it here's how i i could do it easily i take sigma which takes one and maps it to y1 okay so I scan my right hand side somewhere there is this number y1 right so I, I define sigma like this sigma sends 1 to y1 okay I look through my list somewhere there is y2 sigma maps 2 to y2 okay it maps 3 to y3 whatever that may be and so on okay so the first d numbers I map it to y1 y2 yd in that order okay so define sigma like this sigma should map i to di uh, I'm sorry to y i should map i to y i for i between 1 and d okay and for the remaining numbers from d plus 1 to n I don't really care okay and just map it arbitrarily so that it's it's still a permutation okay and uh, define it arbitrarily on uh, j greater than d 
okay, on i greater than d. Okay, when I say arbitrarily, of course, the final end product must still be a permutation. Okay, so I, I have to define it to be some bijection, but all I have to do is y1, y2, yd are already gone, they are taken because they are the images of 1, 2, 3 till d and so the remaining n minus d numbers which will be there on the right hand side and then I have the, these remaining n minus d numbers d plus 1 to n, I sort of just map these remaining guys to those remaining guys in a 1 to 1 onto fashion. So some arbitrary bijection of, of those two sets. Okay, so I, I hope it is clear that if I take any subset y of cardinality d, <coughs> I can always find a, a permutation sigma which will map a to y. Okay. Now, what does this mean? It mean, means that the orbit of a is the entire set p d of x. So, this just tells me that if I take this special set a and I look at its orbit, well that is everything. So, p d of x forms a single orbit and uh, observe that if I take uh, uh, subsets from p d and p d dash of x, you know subsets of two different cardinalities, then as we have said already, I cannot find a group element which maps one subset here, I mean I, which maps the subset of cardinality d to a subset of cardinality d dash where d dash is different from d. Okay? So, what this, this argument entails? is uh, what it implies therefore is the following uh, conclusion that the g orbits for the action of this group S n on the power set of x are precisely the following p 0 of x, this is the empty set p 1 of x and uh, p 0 x is the singleton comprising the empty set p 1 x is all singletons p 2 x and so on till p d x. Okay, p d x is again the singleton comprising just x. Okay. So, these are exactly the, the, the orbits for the action of this group. In particular, how many, uh, oh sorry, this should be p n of x. Now, how many orbits do I have? Exactly n plus 1. So, n plus 1 orbits. Okay, now again let us use our orbit counting theorem. So, orbit counting theorem says that the total number of orbits which in this case is n plus 1 should therefore equal 1 by n factorial that is the cardinality of the group times the sum over all sigma in S n of the cardinality of the fixed point set. Okay, so, now this the, the set on which it is acting is p x not x. So, I need to look at p x sigma. Okay, so, I have just applied the orbit counting theorem uh, for the action of the group S n on the power set of x. Okay, when I do that, this is the equation I, I deduce from that. Okay, now, all that remains is to understand what this, this uh, right hand side looks like and I claim that that p x sigma the set of fixed points the cardinality of the set of fixed points is exactly 2 power the number of cycles in sigma the total number of cycles. Okay? So, uh, once this claim is established the, the problem is done because uh, you know as you can see this is this sum would then become the sum of 2 to the number of cycles and I can take this n factorial over to the other side n factorial into n plus 1 will become n plus 1 factorial. Okay? So, if this, this claim is done then I am done. Okay? Claim implies what we need to prove. Prove originally. Okay? So, the problem is done provided we prove the claim. Okay? So, let us try and understand why this is true. So, I claim that if I fix a certain sigma with a certain cycle structure, then the, uh, the, the number of fixed points for the action of sigma on p x is exactly this number 2 to the number of cycles. So, let us sort of do this by, by example maybe for a start. So, suppose I take sigma 
to be the the permutation that I wrote out initially 1 2 um, 3 let us see what was it 3 5 6 9 4 7 8 so this was a permutation inside s9 so now i'm i'm going to ask suppose i take x to be the set 1 2 3 till 9 then how many subsets of x are fixed under this action of sigma okay so i want to understand px sigma which is what set of all subsets y of x such that sigma acting on y should give me back y okay so let's see what are the possibilities for for y what can it what can be the elements of y okay so let's see suppose i take y uh, to have some some number right y should have at least one of these i mean if y is non empty it must con contain some number so let us say for a start suppose y has the number 4 okay let's try to understand suppose 4 belongs to the set y okay now what 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 do we conclude from that observe when i act sigma on y i should get back y okay so if 4 belongs to y then sigma acting on 4 will belong to sigma acting on y but sigma acting on y is supposed to be y okay so we conclude that therefore sigma acting on 4 which is sigma evaluated on the number 4 this must also be an element of y okay so what does that mean sigma of 4 now remember this is part of this this 3 cycle here so if 4 is there in y then we conclude that sigma of 4 is also there in y okay so 4 uh, 7 8 so this is how sigma x okay so what we have concluded is if 4 is in y then the next guy in the cycle which is 7 must also be in y okay now observe we just repeat the same argument with 7 in place of 4 okay so 7 belongs to y means by the same token sigma acting on 7 will belong to sigma acting on y sorry sigma acting on y which is y again so this implies that sigma 7 is also in y and sigma 7 is this number 8 so we conclude that 8 must also belong to y okay so what this means is that so this this argument now establishes the following if one member of a cycle so 4 in this case if 4 is in y that automatically forces the other members of the cycle to also belong to y okay so what that means is that y is therefore a union of some of these cycles it's a union of some of these cycles of sigma not all of them need need to appear so for example y equals just 4 7 8 is is uh, would certainly be a fixed point suppose i take y only to have the numbers 4 7 and 8 then observe that sigma y is already equal to y so this this is enough so i can only take those three numbers and i will certainly get something that's uh, a fixed point okay or what is another example I could take a union meaning here is another example of a fixed point I can take the elements 4, 7 and 8 then maybe I can take the element 3 as well but if I take 3 I am also forced to take its partner in the same cycle okay so I am supposed to also take 5 only if I do that can I have a chance of uh, y being uh, a fixed point. So, in this case let us see whether this set of 5 elements is in fact fixed 4, 7, 8 uh, if I apply sigma to those 3 I will just keep cycling through those 3 numbers 3 and 5 when I apply sigma to 3 I get 5 when I apply to 5 I get 3 okay. So, when I act sigma to these to this set of 5 elements I get back the same set of 5 elements okay I get get them in a different order maybe when I act on it but I do not care I just want the final set to be the same. Okay. So, here is another example of a, a subset of uh, these 9 elements such that sigma acting on x gives me back uh, sigma acting on y gives me back y okay. so and so on. So, what this means is that in general how do I produce all these y's which are fixed points well this is just the collection of all unions of, of some cycles of sigma 
okay now what does that mean well let's just look at uh, how do we see how many elements there there are therefore okay so what do i have i have the the following cycle so remember sigma looks like it's got 1 2 3 uh, 5 it's got 6 9 and it's got 4 7 8 so how do i find a y well out of these five cycles totally so there are five cycles total so out of these five i can choose any subset of the five okay so i have five possibilities so let me represent each cycle by a dot there are five dots okay there are five possible cycles and out of these five i can choose any subset okay for example i can choose only this this last cycle so then i will get 4 7 8 as my y if i choose this last cycle and this guy then the, the choosing those two cycles would amount to uh, choosing the set y to be 4 7 8 and 3 5 okay the the subset of five elements if i don't choose any of these dots that's like saying i don't choose any of the cycles in other words y is the empty set or if i choose all five dots it means i'm choosing all five cycles in other words all nine numbers okay so it's clear therefore that the the possible y's that you can have the set of fixed points what's the cardinality well it's just uh, the cardinality of the subsets of these these five dots for example okay and how many well that's just the power set of this set of five dots if you wish okay so in our example so i'm i'm just trying to say what it is in this example well in this example this is nothing but the same cardinality as uh, the power set of this set of five dots okay it's just all possible ways of choosing some sub collections of these five dots but remember the power set of a set has cardinality 2 power the number of elements in that set okay so in this case this is 2 power 5 and remember this 5 where did this come from well it's because there are five total cycles okay so in general therefore the same argument in general proves the following that this is just 2 power the total number of cycles in sigma okay and that that establishes our claim and we are done proves our claim and thereby the the original statement that we wanted to prove okay